In August 2015, the government made an ambitious promise that left many proponents of biotechnology in the country excited. In a matter of a month or two, we should be able to be out of the bar. We cannot, as the people of Kenya, be left behind when the world is discussing matters biotechnology. This promise is yet to be fulfilled, and now farmers like Daniel Mugo are left at a crossroad, despite conviction that this is the way to go. If the government had lifted the ban on GMOs, they could not have gone to other countries to import mason grains. Biotechnology researchers are also calling for an end to the impasse surrounding genetically modified crops. The Kenya Agricultural and Livestock Research Organization, CALRO, is currently conducting GMO maize and cotton field trials in conjunction with the African Agricultural Technology Foundation, AATF, under the authorization of National Biosafety Authority. According to CALRO, the government has so far spent over half a billion shillings in the trials, taking place in selected sites across the country. Look at it, not just uh, the funding per se, including the infrastructure, uh, construction, both, and the trainings, and the salaries. Having spent so many resources on GMO studies, researchers want policymakers to have a positive stance. People at the universities training on biotechnology. What's the feeling of a student who is hearing that what he or she is studying has no future? Even though the government banned the importation of GMO products in November 2012, GMO field trials such as this one in Kiboko, Makweni County, have been ongoing since 2010. The longer we take, the worse it becomes. Because at some point, Kenya will become a market. The standoff has prevented Kenya from becoming the second nation in sub-Saharan Africa after South Africa to allow cultivation and consumption of genetically modified crops. Dennis Otieno, Citizen TV, Makweni County.